Uh, welcome once again to Living in the 21st Century. Joining me today is Catherine LeDuc, Director for SEDFOP Inc. and in Disabilities. Uh, Catherine, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for having me back on again. It's been a while, Errol. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing well. I'm sorry for sticking out that long. <laughs> it's okay, but we got to give what the viewers want. Absolutely. Um, yes, yeah, so I want to answer this question because I'm a little bit concerned. We had a conversation a little bit ago, and you had indicated to me that um, for disabled people, finances could be an issue where they can, especially those with credit cards, and this is not to discriminate in any form, because able-bodied people get into financial difficulties at some point or the other in their lives too. But for the disabled person, um, they can get sick at any given time, I mean, that goes for the, the able-bodied person too. But because there's a pre-existing condition in, the, in a person's disability, it can probably prohibit them from working or being able to satisfy their credit card requirements or even rental re, uh, requirements. And then court and these kind of complicated cases pops up. Uh, could you tell me a little bit about what's going on in that area? Well. I almost went to court for one of the credit cards and they were closed. Like the court case was actually closed. And, you know, I had to say about, about permanent hardship and they were understanding about it. But the arrangement was a little hefty, but it was hard to afford it as it is as a person with a disability. And I have like a bunch of other cards. So right now I'm like, I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a deep hole and I had to stick by my apartment because I, I couldn't move to a better place. So, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do to improve on your financial stability. But at the same time, people with disabilities are twice, have find it twice as hard. When, when you get sick, it really, it, like, it's really hard to get back on your feet. Mm -hmm. And now I finally have a job. I got, I'm on my feet sort of, but it's like, you know, it's hard, it's still hard. <laughs> well, let me answer this question. Do you think people with disabilities and whether permanent disabled or could partially work or whatever the case may be, do you think they need some kind of guidance in terms of the amount of credit cards they may get themselves into or? Yes. I, mean, um, I, I try my best to be as reasonable and stating that everyone deserves equality and enjoy the same benefits that anyone else, whether you're able-bodied, disabled, partially disabled, whatever the case may be, uh, you are entitled to equality. But I still think that there should be some level of discretion exercise in how you play your game in terms of get it into credit card um, situations. Um, now you're only speaking on your, from your standpoint, but I want to look at it from a broader perspective because you may have some folks with disabilities and it could be mental disability, whatever the case may be, may, get up a whole, may gather up a whole ton of credit cards and say, well, you know what, I'm disabled. If I don't pay them back, what are they going to do? Are they going to throw me in prison? I'm disabled or I'm trying to look at it from a realistic standpoint. What would be your advice to give anyone disabled or not disabled in terms of exercising their discretion in the amount of debt, be it credit card or higher purchase or whatever the case may be? What kind of financial advice you may give to them, so to speak? Well, I'm not really an expert on financial advice. Well, you, don't have to be, you, don't have to be, you don't have to be an expert. Use your but own. But all I know is to really, like, the next time you get a credit card, don't use it as much. Or even when you get a credit card or someone pressures you to do get a credit card, don't listen. <laughs> well, um, what I'm thinking of you may have a credit card, but because your needs physically. Because you need to build uh, credit. Uh, right, you need to build credit. But what I'm looking at from a broader standpoint, 
uh, you may get a credit card, uh, your knees may, your knees are like anyone else's, right? Uh, you uh -huh. may, have, may have impulse buying situations, I don't know. Uh, but what I'm getting at here, should, when I use the word new, exercising discretion and how you use the credit card, just don't use it to say, well, you know what, I have a credit card, I have some money here, um, let me buy this, let me buy that. It's not really a need. Uh, should you, do you think a credit card should only be used for your needs, opposed to yes. wants? It, it should be for a necessary need than a desire because it's like, you know, or even like an emergency. So for when like your family can't afford to give you what you need, it's like, that's what helps. But at, at the same time, it's like you have to, you have to use it within your discretion, which like you said, when, when you be when you are disabled and you become to age or at a certain age where you should should be held responsible for your own your own direction of life and so forth, do you think it's equisitive for family members to give guidance or say, well, you know what, um, you are now twenty one years old, you are your own man or own woman, and it's you as everyone else which is good equality right across the board but in actual fact there are still disabilities that exist in that person's life do you think that person should have some form of family guidance still there to say well listen look Catherine I know we're all good you're doing a little job but and they don't have to be necessary malicious in your business or being inquisitive into your business but by observation they can see you doing all things that are not a little bit normal in terms of overspending and say well look hey Catherine what's your spending now you know bills are high and if you get sick you still have to pay this bill back and we have to and find actually, ways and actually when like actually when I um when I when I first got all these cards I was paying them right up until I got sick with the breast cancer and I had to get my breast removed. Mm -hmm. So uh, like everything went, it was, everything went downhill from there. Mm -hmm. So um, is it likely that when you are disabled that you can be thrown off of welfare or government assistance? Yes. Well, if you're a capable worker, you could be thrown off of that. But they only assist you for at least three months, and that's it. Just three months? So Yeah, they only give you the money for three months because it doesn't go away like in a day. It doesn't go away right away. Mm. So, so in other words, uh, let me get this straight. Even when you are disabled, you are entitled to work. It, I mean, if a person is permanently disabled, um, there's no financial assistance for your life from government. Is that what you're saying? Well, other than Social Security, there's really no other financial assistance. Oh, and that can only do that much and no more. Yep. So, so can people who are disabled go on Section 8 opposed to be renting an apartment they building. can but it's extremely hard i've been get trying to get on section eight for since i moved here and i and i couldn't because like it, it, it like the, nothing like the applications wasn't available because like everybody took the vouchers oh well um, everybody move. everybody's moving here y yeah um so a lot of people are moving there, and this is in Florida you're at, right? Right. But even though a lot of people are moving to Florida, they're, they're not a whole ton of disabled people that move into Florida. So how can, when they're taking the vouchers, how would that really have an impact on the disabled person? It has a significant impact because mostly all the ethnic groups like you know, black, Spanish mm -hmm. immigrants have, mm -hmm. are entitled to that type of stuff because they give it to them. And 
I know I'm, I know it's not the number one thing for me to say, but no, it's no, like, it is. It is the number one thing for you to say because. But, but, you, but the thing about what disability, because people with disabilities are usually not really regarded in the other classes. Right. They're not regarded in any classes. I'm trying to dissect something here systematically because if immigrants are migrating to the U.S. to go on the system and born American citizens who are disabled, who definitely needs the assistance of government, and government are paying a blind eye to their needs to assist immigrants who come into the country solely to go on the system? Is that what's going on? They, they get priority access to the system. It's like that's always been like that for years. But like, you know, some, like some immigrants follow protocol, but like, you know, but I know some people in the government give priority to immigrants over people that been there for a, been in the country all their lives. Okay. So so what what kind so what kind of circumstances uh, the immigrants that come here will have to be in to get access to government assistance? Cause I know a government well, they should get into the country the right way. Like you know so, so, so is it the ones that come the, the right, the right way? Oh, so the ones who come the right way get access to government welfare? They deserve that because they became American citizens. Then you are then you are entitled to that. Well, I mean, I, I know from experience that government tell you when you come here as an immigrant, they tell you straight, you can't go on the system. You are barred from going on the system. Um, I'm not sure if I'm following that philosophical view. I know that there are immigrants who come here and are illegal. Well, I'm not pointing they, it towards they, you. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm saying that there are immigrants who come to this country who are illegal. And the first thing they do is look to get on Section 8. They look to get impregnated, um, get a child, go on get welfare. Married. They they do all, they do all these things, right? And yes, a lot of them goes on the system and suck the livelihood out of the government. And by all rights, government had made it clear, and we, we would have heard over the past um, six years when Trump was in power. He tried to crack down on some of the abuse that was going on in the system by immigrants who come to this country and want to go on welfare. And by rights, I, I think it is wrong, you know. I think if you're going to come to this country, don't come to exploit the country. You come and work like any other American work. Work for your living, yeah. work for your daily bread. I agree with that. And allow the people who are disabled to get their full benefits. But I agree. I know there are specific groups and cultures that do this, and they do it with pleasure. Right? And then when the American people, and I know this for a fact, when the American people get into their issues in life, um, whether it's disabled at work or getting some other problem, then it's hard for they get help and assistance from government. So I agree with you 100%. I just wanted to make everything clear so the audience can understand directly what we are talking about. Of course. Um, <laughs> we're, just, we're, just, we're just running this. We're just run, running it. <laughs> we're just running this. So, um, so, so with that being said, um, Besides the financial difficulties that immigrants are faced with here, we know that there's also discrimination among, uh, it's not immigrants, uh, disabled people. We know there are discrimination amongst people with disabilities. Um, I'm not just hearing it from you, but I've heard it from other people who I would, who I would have interviewed over the years. Um, disabled people are looked down upon and they are look, look at in society as a nobody. Despite of how someone may give you a smiling face and pretend with you, it's not really that in reality. It's just a fake smile, a fake hello, but in the heart of hearts, the disabled people get looked down upon in this country. 
what you tell me or tell us rather what are your experiences of discrimination as a disabled person well that's a good question so i th i know i told you when i used to work for uh for a big corporation like a cas i worked for a casino mm -hmm. and i didn't make it past a week because they told me i was slow mm -hmm. and i filed a lawsuit against them but t i i sadly lost and i couldn't move forward with the suit because they had powerful lawyers and mm -hmm. they got away with the they got away with the discrimination but um, it, it, it's strange no. again. So it it seems like the system then um, discriminate discriminate against you also because like certain big it, systems are really discriminating you and but there is also light at the end of the tunnel. Like but there's like precious few that will accept you as a disabled person. Yeah, yeah. I want to get the part of discrimination against the disabled because it's it's unconstitutional according to the American with a Disability Act, is totally unconstitutional. And there has to be provisions in the law, and with the right kind of representation, that cases like what you would have told me, you should be able to take it to court and win, not lost. But if I can recall clearly, your, the company you worked for told you that they have the best lawyers, right? Yes. And they, they, um, they often win the cases. They're native, and since they're Native American, you can't, you, you can't touch them. Well, that sounds crazy. Every, every living American, whether you're a native or not, every American and every resident of this country has to comply with the That's Constitution. That's where I used to work. <laughs> no, no, yeah, but no one is above the law. <laughs> That's the Constitution, right? No one is above the law. Everyone has to no. work within the compliance of the law. And when the law is breached, there are consequences to be paid. So and, sa I, I, and sadly, I they're not paying for it. Well, they're not paying for it because you probably didn't had the right attorney at your side to give you the right kind and of. And I couldn't afford. I couldn't afford to move further because the thing about it was like they, they, you know, I just gave up because I couldn't. I I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't afford to move further if they asked me to, but the, it was that they told me that there was, they couldn't move for, further with it because of the casino was, is owned by native Americans and the attorneys you can't really touch. So you got fired because you were slow. Yeah. Um, did you have a probation? Like, did you have a probationary period? Yes. Um, I didn't see. even go past the 90 days. I didn't even oh. go through 90 days. Okay. So th therefore they were within their parameters to do what they do. Um, if you had exceeded the 90 days, then you would and have. You, and you, and you, and you want to know what's not right. Since Florida, you can fire and hire people all you want. Like it's like, it's not right just to fire people for stupid things. Mm -hmm. As of like being slow. I, I see. Um, well, that's that's a sad one, but unfortunately, it seems that there was on the right page. And uh, it's not to say that disabled people can't work at the same pace as the able-bodied person would. Um, they may not be mentally uh, capable of or physically capable of. And I think when, and I'm just saying this in the name of justice, I think when a company is going to employ a disabled person before they even give the person the job, they should just find out what they are capable of doing and within the time frame that they will have expectations for things to be done, to be done. Um, but putting that on a bad side, I want to, on the negative side, I want to look at the general atmosphere of disability people, uh, people with disabilities in this country. Because what you are experiencing and what you would have experienced, Catherine, is not nothing new. And I'm certain that there are so many different people out there with disabilities that faces discrimination every single day. Um, what other beside that you would have experienced as a disabled person? Well, there's plenty of experiences. There was one time that I know there was like a former 
another former job that I had as like a breakfast I a breakfast server. I was a breakfast server at a um I was a breakfast server at a ho- hotel and um basically she was she was yelling at me and wasn't coaching me and like I got I got fired from there due to due to like basically like you know her she was trying to sabotage me. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, like employees can, uh, some employees can try to make or break your job. Mm-hmm. So, so the the job that you are presently in now, um, how are you doing there? Oh, the, the, that is amazing. They're doing everything that they should do. They don't discriminate against disabled people. Mm-hmm. They, they they really helped me become the best person I could be. And I've been there for almost three months. Beautiful. What, what qualities do you see in your present job that you think would be beneficial to other disabled people and also be a good, a good thing for other companies to fashion their business or model their business off of? What are some of the good qualities in this business, in this job you're in that other companies should adopt? um other companies should adopt yeah well they should they should learn from them that they should always follow the law Mm -hmm. okay okay um and in following the law what are some of the qualities within the formation of the law that you would expect them to adhere to they should give the people the decent time and follow and follow the probation period. Like mm-hmm. if, if, if you don't do well, you have every right to fire them, mm-hmm. but like, you don't, you shouldn't really fire somebody mm-hmm. over, mm-hmm. over do, do certain th- things. Mm-hmm. Do you think that orientation before you take a new job as a disabled person, uh, that the person or the company should understand or should be able to see who the true you supposed to be, and expect that there are moments in your job that you may not be as effective as they would expect you to be while you are um, doing your job, and just accept it for what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What advice now would you want to give to... um, disabled people in terms of going to get a job and what they should also expect to do in terms well, of don't, credit. Don't, like, don't give up when it comes to finding a job because you'll find something that's going to accept you. Mm-hmm. That's the advice about that. But as for credit, just try not to make the same mistakes I made when it comes to buying so much credit cards. Okay. Well, um, we are coming down to the last three minutes of the program, and I would like you to um, advise the able and the disabled, because I think having a good credit, having good credibility, is very essential um, for this time of season. So, what would be your good advice to the disabled person and the able person well no matter if you're disabled or able help each other out because it doesn't hurt to doesn't hurt to come together because kindness in the world has a way of coming back to you if you show kindness it'll come back to you beautiful well Catherine, it was a pleasure having you on this morning thanks for coming and airing your um um thoughts and experiences and thank you for uh, for talking and hopefully when we edit this it's probably gonna be a lot of editing <laughs> okay well thank you so much Catherine. It's it's really a pleasure having you on today i'm glad to see you on we haven't spoken in a while but it's always a pleasure to have you we'll take good yeah, care and I'll of keep, yourself I'll keep you po- and i'll keep you posted sure okay bye 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 And for all those who have been tuning in on living in the 21st century, I want to say have a blessed day. Mm